Hey, welcome back to the Ruby Tuesday. My name's Ruben and this is Chris from Movies and Munchies. Today we're going to be talking about writer-director Sean Baker, who gives us his next slice of specific life story. He's a storyteller who brought us The Florida Project, Tangerine and Red Rocket. If you didn't enjoy those movies, you're probably not going to enjoy this one. But is this one different? Is it worth trekking to the cinema for? Let's jump in and find out. A young sex worker from Brooklyn meets and impulsively marries the son of an oligarch. Once the news reaches Russia, her fairy tale is threatened as his parents set out for New York to get the marriage annulled. We're going to be doing the good, the bad, and the ugly, and obviously we're going to start with the good. And for me, and I presume Chris, Mikey Madison is a big part oh, of the good. Absolutely, yes. Dynamic. She has so much charisma and strength. It's a bold and courageous role, I think. Kind of like even in The Substance with Margaret Qualley and Demi Moore. Mm. Because this involves a lot of skin. Yeah. And so Mikey Madison bears herself. She brings just a lot of energy to the screen. And she becomes a very believable character. But then also just as an actor, there's that's a lot of guts to yeah. showcase yourself like this. Yeah, I think it it shines a light on sex work, and you touched on this in our chat in the car on the way back. And it it shines a light in a way that doesn't glorify it, but also doesn't show that it's not a job. It just shows you the nitty gritty day to day life of what it means to be a sex worker, whether that's you're giving lap dances or more or extra stuff that goes under the table. We get to see all the cracks in there, and sometimes literally the cracks, and. I think she plays a character that feels so real that it sometimes feels like you're a fly on the wall or on her shoulder experiencing what she's experiencing. It sometimes feels like a doc, so much so because it feels so authentically real. I 100% believe there are hundreds of Nora's out there after watching this movie because her character felt so real. Well, in that opening sequence too. I mean, it is a drawn-out lap dance, first mm -hmm. off. And then from there, we get to watch Madison's Honora go through her nightly routine. She's working the, the strip club as the sex worker. This can seem exploitative, but what I enjoyed about this was that the story was using this to actually humanize the character and then show us her strengths, uh, show us the depth of her character, really, and make her come across as a person that we can then sympathize with because so often characters put into these roles are just demonized for their choice of work. Mm -hmm. And so then any of that sympathy, any of that value, anything like that, it's just completely dismissed outright. Mm -hmm. And so that then allowed, at least for me, a larger and deeper connection to be made with her. So then when she goes on to this relationship that becomes hectic and everything else and like whirlwind, I'm already on board with her. I don't see her as a leech or as somebody who is less than. I'm rooting for her because I've watched her just trying to make a buck. Um, I think what helps tell the story is the way it is filmed. Like looks wise, it's a beautiful looking film even in its most when you're getting up into personal situations that we shouldn't be privy to. And the film takes its time to stay on some of those situations. It still looks incredible. So along with this very real, authentic acting performance that we have from mm -hmm. the actress who plays Honora, we're getting something that looks sometimes doc-like, but always looks beautiful to look at. Which is sometimes a contrast in itself, but a clever way to do the story. There is some intimate moments that we get. And I'm not talking about sexually, I'm talking about more so the closeness with our characters, where you have a character maybe leaning on somebody else and we get to just be right up in their space, where we can feel the emotion that is being between them, that closeness. Mm. There's also times where things are heightened <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and it's intense and there's verbal exchanges going on and the camera is like right up in your face there. Well, not in our face, in their face. And so you can see the spittle. Yeah. You can see like, you know, the tongue and the, the lips quivering and all of these things. And what that did is that we feel the energy of that and we're... we're so up close and personal. I mean, we're intruding into their personal space. Yeah. 
but it never felt like we were so close that we shouldn't be. I don't know. It's a very, it felt really weird because mm. I, it made me drawn to the scene that we were watching and it felt very connected into whatever that exchange was. Mm. There's a comedy tonal shift about midway through the movie that I definitely didn't expect because the film is doing one thing with telling us who Honora is and her lifestyle. And we get to see, like I said, every little bit of nuance of her life. We stay on through a night, which feels like the first 30, 40 minutes of the movie. Mm -hmm. Once we start getting into that midway part where things start to unravel, the tonal shift is almost slapstick in nature. There's a good kind of kerfuffle which I guess I can use that word, yes. because every situation that they find themselves in seems to escalate that mm. much more and it becomes more slapstick. Now, I didn't like all of this, but I think it definitely worked to maybe sharpen the pace up a little bit, give us some levity because the story content of what we've had is quite dark in places. Maybe that was just me. Maybe that I just found no. it that way. Okay. I, I found I found the humor really worked also, and it was very unexpected. Oh, for sure. I mean, yeah. I, I think, too, the thing that I really liked about it is that it came about naturally. Mm. These situations that were, were occurring, the slapsticky part of that mm. was a natural development in the interactions. Yeah, we're not talking slapstick like, you know, uh, Benny and June where <laughs> the Pratt falls and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. you're trying to you know, it, it's just it happened and you feel like that kind of would happen for the situation that we're in. Yes. I think also because this takes place in a very compressed timeline, while I mean huge you know, character growth is a big thing for me within films and mm -hmm. within stories. We don't actually get to see a lot of character growth, mm -hmm. but we get character reveal. And I think that's what really worked in this because we, there are personalities that come to light mm. the longer we're with them. Okay. And so take somebody that comes across as bad mm. or as evil or we just don't like. Yeah. And then as we get to know them more, just see them more, we understand where they're coming from or at least they reveal themselves to be deeper yeah. than that surface level yeah. bad or whatever that happened to be. So the bad. Um, so Mark Eidelstein plays Ivan. He plays a young, spoiled child of a wealthy family. And I say child because he is 21 in this film, but he acts like a 16 spoiled brat from a broken, dysfunctional family. And he plays it like he should. And there's nothing to disagree with there, except he's very surface level. We never mm. really go deeper on this character. Considering he is the sort of love interest, we understand that he's just running away from his life and caught up in the chaos of that is Honora. And we, I mean, the focus of the film is Honora, so yeah. I get it. But I would have liked more on his character, giving me something more of a humanity to him rather than just being that one dimensional spoiled brat child that we've seen lots of. I can see that. Yeah. Well, and I had mentioned... Uh, before in the good, how I love the cinematography and some of the shot choices. Mm. But there's also something that I didn't enjoy a lot of, and that was the shaky cam mm. that we got. Now, it's not used throughout, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of frenetic moments that are conveying energy, and the scenes are cutting very quickly, and the just the interactions and the actions of our characters are just high energy, always on the move, doing all kinds of crazy things. Yeah. So I, I like that, and I like what that does for the story because it helps move it along in these instances. Mm. But the shaky cam in there made it difficult sometimes to focus on the actual scene, especially as it would shift to another one that was completely locked down. Yeah. And so it was it was uneven Again, within with those. the tonal shift. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, for me also, the pacing between our story segments, mm. it felt a little uneven. Yeah. That, you know, like you talk about, we had character building drama at the beginning, you know, and then we go into tension, but also with comedy. Yes. And then into an angry type of chase. Yeah. Maybe. And so each of these are done well. Yes. But they're uneven between those. And then some of the shots I felt it within the scenes, they just stayed longer than they needed to. Mm -hmm. And so this drug it out. And the story, the movie itself is already long. It's two hours and what, 19 minutes? 19 minutes, minutes yeah. yeah. So 
when you land or you stay on something longer than necessary, it doesn't have the effect of making this feel shorter yeah. when it's a long movie anyway. Yeah. And so that, I thought that was kind of, it was, well, that was a detractor for me. I'm not totally sure what the main message of the story was. I mean, because I enjoyed watching the character drama of her life mm -hmm. because it gives us insight into the person. I mean, she's strong already. Like, out of the gate, we already see that she's strong. Yeah. But then she, she finds herself just being kneecapped because she takes a leap and mm -hmm. she gives over to this emotion which she's been shielding herself from for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so she's opened herself to vulnerability, which then allows for some heartbreak and some disappointment. And, okay, I, I get that. It's a character drama. Yeah. But at the end of the day, why? You're right. So you touched on the length. But I do want to talk about it just a bit longer because the film ling lingers on certain scenes that I was trying to think, like like you're mentioning with the message, like what, what is the point of the movie? Mm -hmm. And I think it's not preachy, but because some scenes feel forced... Mm. It forces you to feel a certain way. And for me, this is the largest issue of the film. There are a lot of films that, in fact, all films, make you feel a certain way. The, mm -hmm. the, the director, the creator, especially the editor, when it comes down to the finality, when they've got everything together, they want the film to tell a certain story and to have you feel funny, sad, scared, whatever. This film opts for the more obvious route where it doesn't feel like they've tried to hide any of that underneath. There's no mm -hmm. subtext. It's not preachy, but this is what you want. we want you to feel here. And this is what we want you to feel here. So instead of feeling artsy, which it is definitely, mm -hmm. it kind of feels like they're hand-holding you along with the artsy feel to it. Now, had I known who the director was going into this movie, I probably would have opted for watching it at home. Uh -huh. So this could be just a Ruben issue because... This director, like the Florida Project, comment. you read comment. Mm -hmm. I didn't enjoy those okay. uh, because I felt like I felt the length. I don't want to be force fed. Yeah. It's not spoonful, but it's force fed sometimes. For me, I don't really have any anything that stood out to me as terrible mm -hmm. in this. Um, you know, we have characters who are terrible, but they're designed that way. Mm -hmm. I, I think probably the strangest thing though that did stand out to me is the final scene working its way into the credits. We have the fade to black and we huh. have a natural sound happening and then that fades out. And for the remainder, I don't know, two and a half, three minutes of credits, there is utter silence. Yeah. It was just uncomfortable. This has nothing to do with, you know, the, I mean, you can get up and leave <laughs> yeah. at the end of the credits, but it was just, it no, felt was purposeful. Strange. Again, yeah. it's what, what I was going back to saying, forcing you to feel a certain uh -huh, way. Yeah. We want to linger on this moment. So you are now going to go, no music. So you remember that scene. You end with mm. it, which is not kind of allowing us to go on the journey with the movie rather than making us go on that journey with the movie. Uh, so my final thoughts is, in the end, Dunora is ballsy in your face. It's a slice of life, modern, pretty woman with a lot of sex, nudity, and real characters. If you enjoyed Red Rockets and The Florida Project, you'll probably enjoy this one. However, I can safely say this is a one-time watch, once-in-a-lifetime watch for me because I won't go back to it. I enjoyed the craft of the movie that was on display, but I didn't enjoy the movie. Does that make sense? Totally. Yeah. So I'm going to give this 2.5 Nicolas Cage's out of 5. Ooh. <laughs> and you got one. This is my best bud, Chris from The Moves and Munchies. Check his channel out if you haven't yet. Thanks so much for enjoying this review. I'm hoping you did. <laughs> but most of all, until next time, remember, live long on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs>